Hey guys, Nathan and Craig here from Arms and Armor. Today we're doing a follow-up video about cutting through uh, pikes with a two-handed sword. So we've done more extensive tests. Stay tuned. So what we did is we whipped up a quick pike head uh, with some lankets on it that we mounted up. Now the long piece of wood we had happened to be pine. So this also will show one of the advantages of having a hard wood for your haft as opposed to a soft wood. The pine didn't last very long. And it ran about 10 foot, eight inches as far as the full length of this pike. So while it's not the 12 to 16 that a lot of pikes were in the period, it is much closer to it than the original uh, showing that we had where we were just trying to talk about that the pikes really couldn't just chop the heads off. It was the longest stick we had. Action. Cutting slowly. Very nice. <laughs> uh, one of the things that is interesting about what you saw or what we see is the langets definitely do help and would have been needed. Uh, but we had a lot of great comments on our first video of people bringing up different elements of the, the equation of using a sword against pikes or other weapons against pikes. So we wanted to add some more to it and talk a little bit about what the differences are in something like this compared to an original. And action. One of the big things would be probably be the grain structure. A lot of the originals were done on a sapling kind of uh, situation where they were copsing trees. And so you had a circular grain structure instead of a linear. Like this. Yeah. Do you see? <laughs> you can see that this is a second. That's why we cut it. <laughs> Your brave hand, Patrick. <laughs> it over to the camera. That's not exactly is what I thought it would be. I mean, that was About fine. half fish or a third mm -hmm. of a way through, but not. Dimensional lumber today is, you know, different than that. So uh, that's one aspect to it. Um, so some of the comments that uh, people made that, you know, were good is you know, in pike formations, many of the pikes were grounded instead of just being held out the way I had Patrick holding out a piece of ash last time. I had him holding it out because it was only six feet long and I didn't want to kill him. Sometimes I want to kill him a little, but not today. Uh, so we tried to do that. It does seem to give some more stability, uh, but at the same time, with a pole that's really long, as you can see in this video, so one of the things that goes on here is that the longer the pole is, the more leverage I have. Patrick's a reasonably strong man. He is a professional blacksmith. <laughs> and I'm just going to push on this stick with my pinky finger, right? It moves out of the way because it's a long lever connected to him. This makes it harder to cut through things the longer they are because when I push on them, they move, and that's the enemy of cutting them. Long levers move the person that's holding them. And so the longer the lever is, the easier it is to move out of the way for someone at the other end of it. And it seems to me that this is gonna make it more difficult to cut through the shaft because it simply moves. There's less resistance when you cut it than there is on a shorter piece, right? If I take this piece of ash and I put it on a stump or something so it's not moving, or an anvil, which I wouldn't do for various <laughs> reasons, but 
I can to I can cut through this. I'll chop through it with that sword. But when it's being held out and it can move, it's way harder to do. Um, one thing that was kind of striking when we did hit it is that once that blade made contact with the steel, it kind of hung. It, it kind of grabbed yeah. a little. So again, if you go back and look at some of our other videos about like the binding attacks on a steel target or a, a buckler on that edge, same concept. The metal allows the sword to gra kind of grab a bit. Now, yeah. you can see here that it definitely allowed the head to stay on the haft even now, even though it blew through some of the bad nails we had and uh, made some significant interest into the wood, you could still take that and stab somebody pretty good with it oh, and yeah. not uh, have fault them for uh, running away because sure. it would hurt. Here is where the sword bit into the langet and it definitely bound when it bit there. It's interesting. There was actually, it bit more securely into the langet than it did the ash wood. So I felt more resistance, and I think Patrick did too. And in fact, that was the time that it broke the haft between his hands because the force was transferred through the langet mm -hmm. down the shaft, causing it to bend later. But flex it. Back to the side. Now flex it. Yeah. Good enough. It's probably because it's pine that it broke yeah. down there. But yeah. the physics are going to be the same. And it wasn't a great grain structure piece of pine. So, no. yeah. It's a closet rod. Yeah. So <laughs> it was the longest thing we had. Mm -hmm. uh, so, some of the other things that people brought up is, you know, driving the the pikes down and then stepping or, or binding them into the ground, this of course would work because you're using physics to your advantage as opposed to disadvantage. Mm -hmm. uh, that it also can be very, very uh, accomplished with uh, clubs, halberds would be excellent types oh, yeah. of weapons for these kind of things exactly. as Make they were described. Do this. We, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, one of the other elements of that physics is, you know, what position is the pike that you're hitting? Because there's three or four positions usually in a pike square where the, the pikes would be at. These are all, you know, we're doing them and demonstrating them one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. Um, some people pointed out battlefield conditions, and that's always the function of a test like this, yeah. is that, you know, we don't have the time or budget to hire a hundred extra people and <laughs> train them up for a week, feed them and all that types of things, mm -hmm. and then run full on pike against cavalry type interactions to test all of these theories. Uh, you know, we don't have the budget for that. If yeah. you'd like to start contributing, please just send us money. We'll let you know when we have enough to do that. Pour whiskey and then we'll make yeah. more decisions. Exactly. <laughs> Luckily for us at the I guess it's not technically WMAW since it's the off year right. this yeah. year, whatever the smaller event is called, Western Martial Arts Workshop that's in uh, Wisconsin. This year is going to be a 16th century uh, experiment with pikes and great swords. So I'll talk to we'll talk to Greg Mele and yeah. James Riley and Adam Franti who are helping put it together. See if we can put together some more interesting tests there in September. Mm -hmm. uh, with massed ranks of pikes and sharp great swords. We'll film that and see how it goes, but that's not for a while. Pretty surprised that this broke and we were able to cut through it, but pine is very yeah. soft. It's very soft. Yeah, it's not a, not a good point to say, oh, these guys busted this, it was pine, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll get a long piece of ha ash cut out and uh, do it up and we can even mount the same head on there and yeah you know make sure the langets aren't busted through and kind of work from that the langets here 
our 16 gauge cold rolled steel. So it's probably equates pretty good to the probably iron on the originals oh, yeah. would be. Totally. And uh, you know, the, the one last thing, yep. if you're interested in how pike squares, you know, have a tendency to be thought of to really kind of work and stuff. Um, I think the ones depicted in Captain, Captain L. Trista, uh, Vigo Mortensen's yeah. Spanish epic it is done pretty well. Yeah. Um, so Captain you know, L. Trista is the, it's pretty much the Spanish Three Musketeers yeah. stories. And this movie, Captain L. Trista, Good luck finding it in America legally. I bet you can yeah. find it illegally. Yeah. You know, there are a bunch of pirates. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you can figure it out. Not that we advocate being illegal, but you know, safety third. That's right. <laughs> safety third. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.